I'm sure we all can picture ourselves in a situation where we just died by the smallest difference and always think to ourselves, what could I have done better in that situation? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to improve your decision making in Apex Legends Season 10. So be sure to stick around. Hey, what's happening, Champion Squad? Welcome your beautiful faces back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about decision making, arguably one of the top three contributing factors on becoming a much better player, which is alongside your aiming and movement. So today I'm going to be breaking down not only this entire game, I'm going to be going over three crucial tips that will help improve your decision making. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, jumping into the game here, the first tip I really want to cover before I get started is really identifying your mistakes. No matter who you are, how good you are, everyone is going to make mistakes when they're playing, but it's up to you on how effectively you can capitalize on your mistakes, as well as limiting them in the first place. And the key word here is identifying. You really want to pay attention to what you could have done better in that situation and really go through it back in your head. As soon as you die, you still have that fresh memory on your head, how everything went down. And that's going to be extremely helpful for you knowing what you did wrong in the gunfight and knowing what you could have possibly done to capitalize on it. Now, yes, I'm playing Valk and it was very easy for me to obtain high ground, but in this specific situation, even if I was playing Lifeline, Bloodhound, anyone else that has limited mobility, just climbing up on height in this exact play would have worked with any legend. And really what I did here is I baited a reaction. I took height from them and I just sat there and waited for an overreaction. I just wanted to see what he was going to do and I'm just going to be pre aiming him and easily winning the exchange. So not too much complex going into this first gunfight, really just taking it slow taking height and making the enemies overreact and really capitalizing on their mistakes. And just remember, sometimes patience is key. Don't overreact too soon because then they can capitalize on your mistakes. I'm rotating over to Gauntlet here. Catch one out in the open and absolutely destroy him. So right now I'm looking to get aggressive. I have a purple armor, decent weapons, and I immediately take the jump pad right for height. Height is going to dominate an Apex Legends no matter what character you're playing. If you're in Gauntlet, you can take these jump pads up there no problem. So the first thing I want to point out quickly is the initial engagement. I got the better of the exchange on the person down low, had him flash for about 30 to 40 damage, and what that's going to do is actually relieve a lot of the pressure. It creates an opening for me where if I push, I won't receive as much damage, it's not as much of a risk. So that's exactly what I did, I capitalized on the play here, took the pad, took roof, and I had a throwable in my hands and he was playing a sort of left to right cover here and what I'm going to do with this throwable is throw it on one of the sides of the object he's using cover on and that's going to scatter him. He's not going to sit behind that object because if he does he's going to get ripped by the arc star. So that's going to force that player to move out of cover. As soon as you throw that arc or whatever kind of throwable you have, grenade, thermite, be ready to pre-aim the angles that they're going to be pushing. You don't necessarily have to pre-aim exactly to the left or exactly to the right but you need to be ready to aim and fire as soon as possible because you know in the back of your head this guy needs to move he's not going to stay there take all that damage and while he moves he's going to give you an open shot for an easy kill so that was a fairly simple initial knock and then the second team was actually underneath me and what i did was i dropped from the backside, aka flanking them because I know that my teammate is pushing from the front side. And not only my teammate was pushing the front side, but he also cleaned up the kill. Enemies are going to turn to that noise and really focus their attention to it. So then I'm going to drop from the back, catch the Pathfinder off guard. And that is a very clean squad wipe where I took little to no damage. And that's where you really want to aim for when you're playing these games. Whether you want to get better at the game, you want to get higher kill games, you want to get more damage games, you really need to improve on the efficiency of wiping squads and doing it in sort of a spectacular fashion where you don't take too much damage, but you still come out on top. Wings up. Wait. 
In the initial engagement, guess what? We're taking height again. As per usual, if you can take height, definitely do it. And if you can take height early on, that's going to be even more key. Because then the enemies have to make a play on you. And you're just really sitting there looking for that opening. Caught someone off guard. He was very low. That was a very easy knock on him. Dropped down because I heard the raid. Snuck up behind her. And again, the flank works every single time. Literally in the last gunfight, flanked the Pathfinder. This gunfight, we flanked the Wraith. And both of these gunfights in Gauntlet were extremely similar in a way that I get the initial knock and then I flank the last player. I'm keeping the enemies guessing. I'm catching them at angles they won't expect. And that's helping me win these gunfights with taking minimal damage and simply outplaying the enemies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're sitting at four kills now. Still 33 alive in this game. And weapon loadout, I'm using the R301 Volt. 301, if you guys haven't used it three times on it, definitely give it a shot. It is a very good scope. And if you're a big two times fan, the three times is just the smallest increment higher and it's still very good. Easy to get adjusted to and it makes one mags at medium to far range much easier. But I'm coming up on a fight here. They're actually already fighting. Notice how I land here. Land, take cover immediately. Even though I have their flank, even though they don't know I'm here, I'm going to abuse my cover. Because I know they're going to turn. They're going to start shooting at me. It's exactly what's happening right now. Again, taking minimal damage. Picked up both of those kills. And now we got the next fight in front of us. I actually want to slow this down because my teammate actually did the exact opposite that I said. Even though we are catching these enemies off guard and whatnot. When I landed, I landed next to cover. My teammate landed in the open. And that's just a bad move. Because his second thought, what's his next move? He doesn't have a next move. His move is really trying to down an enemy in one magazine. And if that fails, he's going down. Only because he has no cover. He has no second move he can make. Maybe he could have smoked out and ran, but it didn't work in this situation. So now I have a 1v2 in my hands, and I'm still abusing the same cover I used to wipe the first squad. I ended up getting stunned with the Valk tack, and I decide to disengage. Keep in mind, I didn't take too much damage here. But the next tip I actually want to go over is knowing when to engage and when to disengage. Could I have stayed at that same rock and tried to take the 1v2 in that same situation there? Yes, but I wanted to play it the safer route. I wanted to really disengage myself, create some more distance. That way I can get the better the exchange at range and then push when it's in my favor. And that's going to create different angles for me. Angles that they wouldn't be pre-aiming. Since I relocated and hit it at a different angle, they're not going to be expecting me to peek out of the rock at a certain way. And what that's going to do is help me get the better of the exchange as long as I'm hitting my shots. And that's exactly what happened with the Valkyrie here. Was able to one magger. They can get a 1v1 situation. And using that same rock I took out Valk with, I was able to take out Seer. And just keep in mind is you need to learn how to play passive aggressive. And I talk about this a lot in my other tip videos where you can't just fully push everything all at once. You might see some streamers do it. You might see, you know, really good players do it. It's very hard to replicate it because they have so much time put into the game. They hit almost every single shot that they shoot. And unless you're doing that, you're not going to be able to just fully push everything especially when you're playing solo. The res beacon is unfortunately taken. That was right next to me. So the only place I can res would be salvage. And as I'm rotating there, I noticed a Loba to my left. Ended up snapping on her. Yes, I got the better of the exchange on her. I cracked her. She hit me for about 50 damage. We are going to disengage in this situation. I want to keep a little bit more distance and seeing if I can get somebody really weak before I can push and create that opening. We're also looking for a potential knock. You know, if you get a potential knock, that's even better. You're just turning into a 1v1 situation and it's going to be much easier for you to handle. So right here, I honestly just backed up. I didn't even fight it. I could have fought that, cleaned up the kills, but I want to be a good teammate going for the res and get my guy Bank Flow Boogie back on the scene here with me. And we're sitting with eight kills, 24 alive. This is a good game right now. So after I got the res, I noticed they started fighting another squad. The squad I was originally fighting, they're going at it right now. And what I'm going to do here... You guys are probably going to guess in the comments. Taking height. The initial height advantage with Valk is just so good. Again, you can do this with other characters, but you really need to climb up. Got a beautiful one mag on the Watson on top there. But then I got absolutely destroyed by two other enemies here. I, I couldn't get an angle on the Loba. I got bamboozled with her, so I need to back up, take a bat here. Now, while taking a bat, I'm looking at my surroundings, making sure I'm good on my flank. And I'm playing it my game. I'm not, I don't want to force it too early. And I noticed, look, another team right behind me. Get a beautiful exchange on him. He was unfortunately wiped by an enemy team. I see his teammate out in the distance. That's an immediate push. Because that's going to be a wipe to the squad. He's only about 50 HP. And he's down. So right now I'm doing a very good job of really 
inserting and exerting myself in a gunfight situation. I'm doing some damage, doing what I could do, and then I'm leaving. And I'm not trying to get myself in a really sticky situation where there's a lot of choke spots, a lot of spots where I can't really escape with Valk. I'm using Loba as a cover right now. <laughs> Just crouching right behind her, taking the bat, which is awesome. And the other team's actually shooting at me. Right now, I'm going to fly back again, create my distance, create that long range fight. I trust my shot. I have it three times. I have the scope for it. And I'm just praying right now that the other enemies are going to clean up the down kill that I have. Teammate ended up going down as well, and he got wiped, unfortunately, again. So, right now, a lot of 1v2 situations in this entire game. And this is where things start to get spicy because I don't have too many local res beacons in the area. So now I'm looking to really play solo and have a solo mindset. I end up cracking the seer on the roof there. But I noticed there's also another seer to my right, which was the seer that I almost knocked that was in the smoke. So it's actually two teams here. It's a team of two and a team of one. But the team of one is hiding. He's waiting right now for this two-man team to get aggro on me and then he's going to push. And I knew that in the back of my head, so that's why I'm sort of playing passive here. And I'm not pushing off of these big damage exchanges that I'm getting on this team. So it's not necessarily that I'm farming damage, it's just that I don't have the proper opening I'm looking for. So what I'm thinking right now is I'm going to fully loot and loot these boxes as much as I can. If this solo seer wants to expose himself and start firing and really cause the fight to go down, then I will, you know, butt myself in there and start cleaning up some kills. But if that doesn't happen, I'm going to sit pretty and see what they can do to me. So that two-man team starts getting a bit aggro on me, and I noticed that they weren't fighting the solo seer. So I'm going to decide to just play my game. I'm going to disengage from this fight, and I'm just going to rotate for zone. Never really want to force gunfights because you're just going to die, put yourself in a bad situation. So now we're off the scene and looking for the next opponent. So I noticed some enemies down low here. Look to take some shots at this Loba. End up cracking her on blue, which is nice. She only has blue armor. Jumping on the rope to avoid some damage. Do a kind of a risky Valk tap, but I connected. And when you connect with attack, they get stunned for so long. Created a beautiful opening on that Bloodhound. Was able to one mag him because he's moving literally two miles an hour, not even. And then guess what? That team coming out of cave sending shots at this Loba is the same team that was chasing me. So I'm going to get my butt out of here and Valk out. And I ended up stealing their kill. So I took out both of those enemies, got a squad wipe to my name, which was awesome. So after I Valked out, I took some uh, height over at this no-name town. And I'm playing roof. Again, I'm playing height on every single possible situation I can have in my hands. Especially when I'm solo. Recharging shield. There's a two-man team up there. I didn't get sort of any real damage. Plus, the zone closed in. So I'm going to fly back, play some more left or right cover, and see if they decided to push, but they didn't. I'm getting longboat from another team. So I'm just repositioning here. And I'm actually low on cells. I ran out of cells. I, I have two bats, so I'm good on bats. I'm just going to loot real quick, see what I can get, top off on what I need to top off on. And they are fighting in front of me, so I really want to quickly engage as fast as possible. And not let them prepare for me. Prepare for my push. Basically, I'm third partying them at the worst moment possible. Be able to catch a lifeline off guard. Flatline's beautiful for one mag opportunities, guys. And I absolutely robbed the Rampart kill on this team. And guess what? I'm not going to be nice. I'm going to get aggressive on the team because I know they're low. End up destroying the Valkyrie there. And that's an instant push on this. And right now I'm looking for this Valkyrie. I can hear her walking around. I don't know exactly where she is though. Radar shows the rings close by. But notice how I'm checking these corners here. I'm not just running in full guns blazing. Making so much noise. I'm really walking around. Checking, crouching. 
and trying to listen for footsteps. I couldn't find that Valk and I immediately take height. Height is a beautiful advantage to really distress the situation. See if enemies are nearby. Then I see the Valk and she ended up ulting out, which is unfortunate. But in my mind, instead of resting my teammate, which was kind of a little bit selfish move here, I thought this Valk was going for her teammate's banner. So I wanted to really block her and force her to fight me. But that was not the case. And guess what? I do have some more enemies in front of me. So this is a whole new team in this little vault cubby here. Able to get some beautiful shots on Ray. She's about 30 HP. Change up my angles. Try to re-peek on this. See if I can knock her. Can't get her. And I notice the zone starts closing in. Also, it's ring three. So I'm hitting these boxes. See, seeing what I can get. Top off on bats. Top off on what I need to top off on. And then ult out. I'm not going to force the fight on that two-man team down low. I'm going to reposition, play zone, and then re-engage. Notice every time I disengage, when I re-engage, I re-engage in my favor. Positioning that favors me, gunfight angles that favors me, and really third partying fights. So this is a fantastic job that I'm doing here. And how you really should be playing when you're playing solo, because I know a lot of you guys are solo players, whether that be ranked or just regular pubs. Man, oh man, oh man. I almost just got destroyed there. <laughs> that came down to the wire. Look at my health, literally 0.5 HP there. But let's quickly back that up because I really want to break this situation down here. Uh, did I know this was a 1v2 situation? I did not. When I engaged this gunfight, I had very little cover here. The only cover I really had was to fly back around the way I came from because an ordinary character that wasn't Valk would have a hard time managing and navigating through the border of this zone where it was partially cut into the mountain here. And that's actually the third tip I want to get into before we break this gunfight situation down, which is going to be always plan ahead. You always need a plan B. You always need a second option. You always need to know what you can do next if things are not going your way. I walked up actually slowly and I love walking because it limits your footsteps noise. This octane in front of me is literally running at me. So he's making a lot of noise and that's going to really help me pre-aim him knowing where he's coming from. He's not going to know where I'm coming from. So I'm going to have the first shots on him. So he got off a lot of damage on me, 125 damage since I had red Evo. And what I was looking to do is get a quick thirst and a shield swap. But off to my left, I noticed the Valk was right there. So instead of continuously trying to finish this person, I need to leave this situation and then re-engage. I am just praying for the best right now, just flying up on the rocks. I know I'm not going to be able to stay up here because it's going to force me off, but that's going to give me enough time to crank this bat in midair. I land with Valk. It's just a shambly fight. Look at this. We both have to reload. Octane actually had self-res. He gets caught in my hip fire and was able to take out the Valk. As soon as I wiped him, I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, I can't believe I'm alive. So as I'm rotating to this next zone here, I hear some sniper shots going down in this little no-name town right in front of Bunker. So I'm sneaking my way up on this fight and I hear multiple footsteps. So I know there's two alive for sure. Instantly go for height. And by playing height, I even said this in the beginning of the video, this forces the enemies to make the play on you, forces the enemies to make more mistakes, and you really catch them and capitalize on them, on the plays that they're trying to make on you. And now it's one squad left, and they're pushing me. And I love when enemies push me in the open, because I know I'm capable of hitting a lot of the shots, especially with the 301, with a good scope on it. And I was able to destroy them both, creating my opening. So it creates an opening for myself to really push up, play zone, and get myself invested in this fight. 
So I noticed the Loba TP out, and that gives me some free real estate to take height from this team. Every single gunfight, or I shouldn't say every single gunfight, but majority of the gunfights I had in this game, I was on height. I took height initially, and that's really going to help me dominate these gunfight exchanges and keep enemies at bay, sort of forcing them to make the mistake. So in this moment, I was looking at the zone, and I noticed myself directly center of the zone. I have a 1v2 gunfight situation in my hands. I'm a little bit more relaxed knowing that I have the best positioning on this fight and the best zone positioning on this fight. That's really going to help me put a pain on this 1v2 squad here. And what I'm looking for on this fight is, again, a potential knock or a devastating damage blow of at least 180 plus around like the 180 mark where they have to take a mech kit and a battery to get back into the fight. So I did the damage on the Loba that I thought was sendable. While I was sending, she played cover beautifully where she didn't give me an angle and she was sort of baiting me. And as soon as I read that, guess what? I'm not going to sit there and try to wait for her to give me an angle. I'm going back for height. I need to play my game. And right there, they were making me play their game. And that's a big no-no. So I'm going to take out their Loba ult. But I also noticed they have an alternator. And that thing is lethal. That thing is so strong. So I need to be careful here. Now I'm a bit more nervous now. Because I know the alternator's in play. They're getting a bit aggro on me. I tag Loba there. 19 flesh. I'm thinking to myself, is she out of shields? And if she is, that's going to be really helpful for me. So I stunned the Seer here. Almost cleaned him up. I was so unfortunate I couldn't kill him right there. If I killed him right there, that was an end to this fight because I knew the Lobo was weak. Again, same play where I did enough damage to push Seer, but he's cranking cells with gold armor. I don't know where this Lobo is, so I'm going to back up again. Go for my height. And the Lobo tries to take height from me, so I'm taking a bat. I'm around my cover. Wasting time, so I get that bat off. Was able to kill the Lobo, retaking another bat. Things are looking very good right now. I'm crouching around. I'm not going to play in his seer ult. I'm going to try to finish that down player if I can. To make it a solid, fair 1v1 gunfight. And boom, there we go. We cleaned the lobe up. Now I'm a bit more relaxed. Now we have a 1v1 in our hands. So now I'm thinking to myself, this seer has to be somewhat nervous. I took out his teammate. He's not giving me any angles down low. And I don't want it to wait till last second where I have to drop on him and sort of risk a 50-50 gunfight. So I'm going to wrap around and play cover and see if I can get the better of the exchange. End up getting the better of the exchange there. And I noticed he was going to try to make a sneaky move, trying to take Kai from me. Insta fly up, take Kai, kill him while he's climbing. Good fucking game. Fucking and took him out with ease. And that was a beautiful game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's get a summary going on the tips that I've said throughout this entire game on top of the gunfight breakdowns. First one being is identifying your mistakes. If you're not knowing what you're doing wrong in the situation, you're going to be making these same mistakes over and over again. So as soon as you die, really think to yourself, especially because it's fresh in your head, what you could have done in that situation differently. Number two is knowing when to engage and when to disengage. Again, playing that passive aggressive play style. And lastly, the third tip was always plan ahead. You need to have that plan B in the back of your head. Keep that in mind, knowing what you can do next. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you learned a thing or two or you just needed a refresher, a like rating is always appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe, join the champion squad for some more awesome content. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, this was Sultan D. I'm signing off. Peace.